In today's video, we're going to talk about the process of hiring a financial advisor, the different types of advisors that exist today, and whether or not you actually need a financial advisor at all. Stay tuned, let's jump in. Hey, how do you know whether or not you actually need a financial advisor? You know, whether you have one already, you've had one in the past, maybe you've thought, you know what, I'll never get a financial advisor. And there's a lot of questions around the profession of financial advisor. How do we get paid? What kind of value can we bring? Is it actually worth it? Um, do I actually need a financial advisor to succeed or can I do all this on my own, right? It can be kind of daunting to really determine, hey, did I make the right decision? And that goes for whether you've had a financial advisor right now. Um, there are actually a couple of different types of advisors that you can pick from. We don't all do the same thing. I've heard that a lot too. You know, different types of financial advisors have different specialties. They have different fee structures. They have different styles and approaches. So it's not that simple, which makes it difficult because this is a life-changing decision that a lot of people have to make. So. Let me put it to you this way. If you have an advisor now, do you know which type of advisor you're with? Are you with the right type of advisor? Could you be or should you be with somebody else? And for those of you who don't have a financial advisor, then this will really help you because if you're one of those people out there, like the countless that I've met who go, hey, I know I need a guide. I know I can't do this on my own. I need to hire someone, but ah, I don't know where to start. And we're gonna teach you about three different types of financial advisors, right? So. By the way, I'm Jet. I will be your guide for today, Vice President at WA Smith. I've got the talking bulb, so I'm excited. Again, three types of advisors we're gonna cover. And the whole goal here, as always, financial peace of mind for you and your family. Uh, I'm excited, let's get into it. Let's jump up to the grease board and get started. Okay, so different types of financial advisors. Um, I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of people, they think we're all the same. Every financial, per oh, you're a financial advisor. It doesn't matter who you work for or what type of, they just think every financial advisor does the same thing and we're all cut from the same cloth and it's, it's just not true. It couldn't be further from the truth. There are a lot of different types of financial people that do different things, that sell different products, provide different services. And so get that out of your head right now. If you think that we're all the same, we're not. Now, there are a lot of different types and there's nothing wrong with any one given type whatsoever or certain companies, we just do different things. So let me help you sort all this out. Truthfully, before we even get into the three types I have written on the board here, what you have to ask yourself is, and this is a tough question to answer, it's do I actually need a financial advisor? Because it's not a guaranteed conclusion. I've met plenty of people throughout the course of my career who have enough knowledge base and they have the desire and the willingness and they actually like it, it's a hobby, and they can handle their money on their own and they do quite well for themselves. And then I meet a whole lot more people who are the opposite or somewhere not along those lines, more so, uh, and, and so goes the mission of our company to ensure our clients focus more on their life and worry less about their money. I meet a lot more people like that where, hey, I wanna be involved and I wanna be informed, but I wanna focus on life. I wanna focus on my retirement and I want you guys to handle the money. I want you guys to focus on that. So I think you gotta start there. If you, you are one of those people out there, you know you need guidance. You know this isn't your cup of tea. My dad was like that. My mom was the captain of the financial ship. When she passed away, my dad, clueless. He would admit it. He didn't want anything to do with it. He knew he needed a financial advisor. He knew he wasn't capable, he wasn't confident, and most importantly, he wasn't willing to be that person. So you gotta start there, ask yourself, do I need a financial advisor? If you say yes, now it's the myriad of choices, and I've simplified this for you big time. Uh, you could probably make this into a whole larger list if you wanted to get detailed, but let's categorize financial professionals and salespeople into three simple categories. Number one, we've got your product provider. I've got them at the bottom of the pyramid here. And again, let me go back up and say, nothing wrong with any different type of financial advisor or professional. You just gotta figure out who's right for you. What's a product provider do? Well, quite simply, it's in the name of what I just said. They provide financial products and vehicles. 
They sell financial things to people who need them. But there's a couple of keys here. You have to do your own due diligence here. You have to determine if the thing that is being offered to you or suggested to you by the product provider is actually suitable for your own situation. There need not be a fiduciary standard here. If you've ever heard about the, the, the term fiduciary, right? What's a fiduciary? Well, a fiduciary advisor has to put your best interests ahead of their own when they make a financial recommendation to you. Believe it or not, not all financial advisors are held to a fiduciary standard, so you gotta be careful, and that's an important question. I know a lot of product providers who have a lot of knowledge and they have a lot of products that they can offer you and a bunch of things that they can do, but they are not fiduciaries, and a lot of times, product providers represent a company, an entity. They, they sell that company's products off the shelf. They provide things that they are the only ones that are, are allowed to sell those items. And they could be great products and great solutions for you, but you have to be careful no matter which type you choose. So a product provider, typically gonna be fairly low cost. You gotta do a lot of your own due diligence. They're gonna sell you things that you agree to purchase and those things could be good for you or they might not be so suitable. But if you're looking for comprehensive guidance, if you're looking for planning, probably not the best area for you to start. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Let's talk about investment advisors. Slightly different. Investment advisors typically are going to have a securities license. That's the type of license that you would need to be able to legally provide investment advice on the purchase or the recommendation of a security. What's a security? Well, a stock, a bond, something that has some risk associated with it potentially could be a security. You have to have the appropriate license to be able to recommend or sell a client a security. Now an investment advisor, the best way I can describe it is they manage your money, right? So if you want someone to help you pick the right stuff, the right stocks, the right bonds, the right mutual funds, the right exchange traded funds, whatever the security is, you want them to help you build a mixture, we call it an allocation, and you want them to manage it for you. You don't wanna focus on that type of thing, then an investment advisor could be your money manager. And you hear those terms before, money manager, investment advisor, assets under management. A lot of times you pay a fee for that service. It could be a percentage of how much money you have under management with the advisor. It could be a flat fee. Again, the term fiduciary comes back into play here. Not all investment advisors are held to a fiduciary standard. Actually, it depends on which type of securities license you have. It depends on the type of firm that you choose to work for or that you represent. Do they have a fiduciary standard to their clients, right? So be careful here. This is really more for, you know, go back to product provider for a second. Do it yourself or someone who likes to have the hands on the steering wheel all the time. They're, they're comfortable, they're confident. Product provider might be a good solution for a do-it-yourselfer because they just need assistance buying things that they can't buy on their own. They need a licensed insurance professional or a licensed advisor to help them get those things that they can't do on their own. But if you're someone who actually wants some guidance, you probably wanna go up the ring here and go to the investment advisor because an investment advisor is going to charge you a fee and they're gonna do the buying and the selling and the management of your assets, which is something that a lot of people would rather have. They don't wanna worry about stock markets and economies and they don't have the knowledge to do that. Now, if you're the type of person who wants a plan, holistic planner, holistic comes to mind, comprehensive I hear a lot, you want a comprehensive financial plan, what's that actually mean to you? Does that mean you just need investment advice or do you want advice in the areas of estate planning and tax planning and healthcare planning and you want it to all tie together and do you want that to be cohesive? Do you want one team handling all of your stuff for you and it's not just on your investments, then you're looking for a holistic planner. That's the type of work that WA Smith Financial, that's what we do for our clients. We want to, yes, help them with investment management and product selection, but we're gonna build a plan and a strategy first. You don't invest first, you build the strategy first. Most holistic planners, fiduciary types of advisors, independent advisory groups. We have the whole universe of financial products under the sun available to recommend or help our clients purchase and position. So you go back to the investment advisor, they might not be able to use every financial product that's available. They might have a select few that they can use that their company allows them to use. 
They might favor one company versus another. Doesn't make it bad, doesn't make any of those choices bad. But if you are looking for holistic, comprehensive planning, plans that you can walk away with where you know all the five key areas of your financial life will be covered or at least addressed in some capacity, constantly reviewed, then you wanna have the holistic planner. Now I will say, in some cases, the holistic planner, that type of advice might be the most expensive. You could argue that, hey, most expensive, middle of the road, least expensive. Um, not always the case though. You can find very competitive fee schedules and prices for a holistic planner and fee is what you pay, value is what you get in return. Someone very smart once told me, do you want good or do you want cheap? Again, make sure you understand exactly what you're getting yourself into. Go back a step. What do you want out of the relationship? What are your goals and objectives? Do you just need a little bit of help finding the right vehicle? Or do you want to have an overarching comprehensive approach built for you and with you? That is your keys to success with the three different types of financial advisors that we talked about here. Okay, so you've got some general knowledge about the three different types of advisors. You might have an idea of which advisor would be a good fit for you and your goals, your objectives, but what do you do now? Where do you go from here? You have to apply the knowledge. Applied knowledge is power. So if you're the type of person who knows they need guidance, you're going to hire a financial professional. First thing I want you to do, in the description there's a link. Click on that link. You can download one of our free resources that is titled How to Hire the Right Financial Advisor. Chock full of great information, even more than I gave you here in this video that will help you make sure you hire the right person for you. Or if you're not quite there yet, and that's okay, because I wouldn't hire an advisor until you know if you're actually ready to retire or if you need the help, we've got another resource. Check out the video above here, and it is How to Know If You're Ready to Retire. Awesome video that will help you understand the questions and the path that you need to take to determine, hey, I've saved enough money, I can actually retire, I can do this. Start there, then hire your financial professional, step one, step two, and you'll be in great shape. Make sure you subscribe to this page for more educational content so that you can catch our, our video next week. So long, we'll see you there.